happy with that. There's one more thing that I can do, a little tip that I'll take and share with you, uh, the, the set variable, if you will, PSLT scale. Uh, if I default in my template that comes up as one, I'm going to set that to zero and hit enter. The reason for that is uh, I don't want to have my paper space scale, line type scales be different than my model space. So essentially if I don't set this now, there's a different PSLT scale that will be created on every layout that I'll do in the future. So if I break this out into 50 different tabs and I didn't want that value, I'd have to go to each tab and take and set that back. So I'm going to set it to zero now and we'll go ahead and save this. We'll come up to the top, file, we'll say save, and for right now, we'll just throw it on my desktop here, and we'll call it utility, and actually, I apologize, that's be a template. We must make sure and save it as a BWT extension, otherwise, Tibble 3D will not see it as a template file, we'll say utility. and we'll say save. I can give it a description, so we can say template for math books. If we wanted to, instead of throwing it on the desktop, I could have incorporated it into the same plan production folder where Autodesk takes and stores the main ones that we use for creating uh, our plan profile type sheet. So we've created that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this tool to close out of my template, and I'm back to what I was faced with before. So, with my MathBook template made, let's automatically break out some sheets. If you notice at the bottom, I've got essentially two tabs already created, layout one and layout two. I'm not going to worry about those for right now. We'll create some new ones. The other thing that I would point out is when we create these MathBooks, I can automatically integrate these sheets into a sheet set, which is very nice. You'll see I've got an existing sheet set that's already open. That shows my plan profile from the, the previous webcast that we broke out. My plan profile sheet, what we're going to do is integrate my utility plan into those as well. So, let's go ahead and create these via MacBook. I'm going to come over to my task pane. We'll say new. And we'll create a new MacBook. And then basically we just have to answer some questions. It's going to ask us what's the MacBook name going to be. In this case, we'll say utility plan. I'll step down to my sheet template. What template are we going to utilize? I'll hit the ellipsis here, and I'm going to come out onto my desktop and grab the one that we just created here, utility. We'll say open. Within that template itself, what layout are we going to use? That's why I gave the, a layout of a name besides layout one so I would know which one it was. Are we going to include a title block? Yes, I will. I've already got a block in there that made up my border. And then finally, would we like to create the adjacent arrows or the sheet links? And in this case, I will. And we'll use the custom map arrow block that we created. Scale factor. How much of an area do I intend to show in my main viewport? I'm going to say 50 scale. And we'll take and move on to the next one. Tiling scheme. How do we want to take and display or break up our sheets? We can break them up by number, so we can start in the upper left or lower right, and we can have columns and rows. We can do it by a particular area. We can even have custom tiles that are laid out if it's something that's not going to be necessarily in a grid-type fashion. In this case, we'll start with, I'm just going to say by number. We'll say pick upper left. And I'm going to pick a point and back up here just to touch. I'm going to shut off my object stamp. I'm going to pick a point just up here in the upper left with my crosshair. That's where I intend to start. So we'll select that. Columns, I really don't know at this point how many we're going to have. So maybe I'll set that to five. And maybe I'll guess at five rows as well. And over, overlap, would we like any overlap between sheets? In this case, I'm going to say no, we'll set it to zero. I would like it to, you know, when it hits one edge, it'll move right on to the next one. We'll go ahead. At the very bottom down here is a button that says preview. I can select that, and it will automatically display for me on the screen what my tiled viewports are going to look like. And as I look at that, you know what? I'm happy with the number of columns I have maybe going to four and my rows going to three. 
the extra tiles are on the outside edge, I'm probably not going to need those. So we'll edit it, and I'll go ahead and update those values. So we'll say columns of four. We'll say rows of three. I'm good with those. We'll come down, as far as my naming scheme, how would I like to take and name those newly created layouts? I can do a, like a map type structure if you'd like, A1, B1, B2, B3, that type of a structure, or we can just say like grid sequential. I'm going to start with maybe sheet number 10. I'm going to increment by one, and it will automatically number my sheets from top left, in this case, to lower right. All right, I have the ability to create my key map. In this case, my key map, I'm going to take and construct from layers. We can also do it from a link drawing or external reference. My layers, we'll go ahead and select the layers I would like to display in my key map. Those will be the only ones that show up in that viewport. I don't have the need for a legend in this case. And I'm going to go ahead for a sheet set. I'm going to integrate these into the sheet set that I'm currently working with. So we'll go ahead and select. Let me grab this real quick here. I'm going to have to drill down the folder where that is. My Lakewood. We'll say open. It should show the minor profile ones we've already created. I'm going to rename this. These will be my utility sheets. And we'll go ahead and say generate. will chug for a couple of seconds and if you watch at the bottom you're going to see a couple of things. You'll see the layout tab will appear across the bottom as well as you'll see a grid displayed on the screen for all of those different sheets. So if I come down now and I select for perhaps the utility plan 10, it'll come right to my layout sheet. It takes and shows me the, uh, I got my gray, uh, my gray and fill back, but if I take and select my sheet it gives me that. I look on my key map. My key map has got my uh, area identified as well. If I take and hover over a particular area, you'll see the hyperlink taken display. If I hold down the control key and select that arrow, it'll automatically jump from page to page. All right, so the arrows themselves can be very helpful for us in navigation. If I wanted to move one, tape, one tab to the right, I can hold and click, and it will take and jump over one tab for me. All right. Nothing magical about it. Once they've been created, I can customize the sheets any way that I would otherwise. But the, the big plus or the, the payoff for us is the actual construction I created in this case uh, with a four by three. I created 12 sheets, you know, with a key mass and, and everything that I was going to need for those sheets in a matter of just a few seconds if I had my template already constructed. If I come back and look at my sheet manager, we look at the utility plans, we think, see that those have automatically been integrated into my existing sheet set. So if I wanted to go to sheet 15, I could take and click on that and it would immediately jump me to that page, which I'm looking at right now. Let's go to 16 and I'll take and see that. Okay, so a very powerful tool allows us to take and break those out very quickly and then gives us the ability to navigate in between them.